Hey guys, it's Michael with Wasatch Fitness Academy and it's late August, which means that it is a little bit early to be thinking about ski season. It is 95 degrees here in Salt Lake City today, but it's time to start thinking about ski season. In particular, making sure that you're ready. That you're ready to have a phenomenal first day on the snow. You don't need to get your ski legs under you. You need to be ready on day one so you can go from first chair, first day, to last chair, last day, or your first skin tracks in you know October, November, whenever we start getting snow. I want you to be ready. You want to be ready to have a good season. So, we're starting to think about dry land ski training here at Wasatch Fitness Academy. So here's what we do. As with all of our programming, the question is always, what do we need? What are the holes that we have? What are the, what are the uh, athletic attributes that we've got to have to perform well from first day to last day? For skiing, this is it. You need eccentric leg strength. You need your legs to be able to absorb bumps. You need to be able to absorb changes in snowpack. If you can do that, you don't get tired as fast. If you know, if you've trained your body to absorb those impacts, if you've been spending the summer running or cycling or hiking, great. You've got an endurance base, but this eccentric leg strength and the frequency of those vibrations is really specific to skiing. So we need to hit that. Second thing, single leg strength and stability. So this is about being able to move on one leg and to move dynamically on one leg without the knees caving in or collapsing at the ankle. So we do a lot of specific training here. And a lot of this is stuff that we might do with a PT or with a physical therapist but we do it in the gym because we need it not just to be healthy and keep the knees healthy, but to have a great ski season. Third, chassis integrity, by which we really just mean core strength, but that core is connected to hips and shoulders. So if your abs are really strong, you got a ripped six pack, but you can't control where your pelvis goes in space, or you get thrown forward every time you huck off of a cliff or just you know hit a little bump, it's not gonna be a very good year. Your low back's gonna get tweaked, your upper back's gonna get really sore. So we actually build that strength from day one now. We're already starting here in the gym. And then the last one is just overall endurance, right? We need to be able to feel good for the entire run, for the entire day, for the entire season. So we wanna continue building endurance in these realms. Again, if you spend the hot summer hiking, biking, running, awesome. You've got the heart, you've got the cardiovascular system going, but we need to make sure that the legs are ready and the heart is ready to pump blood through the legs. Now, this is the outline. How do we do this? What's this programming look like? Well, let's take a look at it. I'm gonna spin you guys to the other board. All right, so let's take a look at today's workout. This is Monday, August, or, yeah, Monday, August 21st, 2017. We're starting off today, two minutes of joint mobility work at the spine, the shoulders, the neck moving around. We're collecting two minutes in the bottom of a goblet squat, just a static hold, just to open the hips up. And three minutes of unloaded get-ups, just continuous movement, get the heart rate up a little bit. Then we're gonna go into our first piece of work, part B, 15 minutes rounds for quality. Four floor presses per side with the dumbbell or kettlebell. 10 heavy two-handed swings and 10 goblet squats. So here we're starting to work into the legs a little bit, into the glutes. We're practicing that hinge pattern. Um, and we're really just building up the posterior chain, the back side of the body, so that we can stand all of that loaded jumping while we ski. We're gonna go into a 15 minute sec section just to work up to a heavy triple kettlebell get up. This is very much about core stability, strength in the shoulders, and really moving through that lunge pattern and being able to generate some strength through the lunge. 10 rounds with the battle rope, 15 seconds on, 30 seconds off. And our movement today is symmetrical, vertical waves, so both ropes moving vertically at the same time, through jump lunges. So we are dynamically loading, unloading, jumping out of the lunge, and then dropping back into the next one, not just to generate power through the legs, but we can generate power through the arms. And then finally, 10 minute chassis integrity grind. Kneeling half moons, kneeling founder, standing founder, and a set of kettlebell, or set of sandbag cleans. The goal here is again, build that core strength and build the power through the shoulder and through the hip, right? Kneeling half moons are very much a shoulder-centric movement. Standing uh, sandbag cleans are very much a hip-centric movement. So we are just continually trying to build that core strength stability so that we don't get thrown around too much on the mountain. So that's, there's it, right? Four strategies, four primary outcomes that we want for our skiers. This is one way that we do it. We don't have a ton of single leg stability work. Um, it's out for today, but we are doing the jump lunges, but that'll show up on another day. Reach out with questions. We'd love to see you. Michael at WasatchFitnessAcademy.com. Thanks.